This video is brought to you by Joa, maker of premium Tesla and vehicle accessories. Claim your discount by using the link in the description below. So being that the Cybertruck is so new and so many things about it are different, I wanted to do a three month update. I have over 6,000 miles now and I'm just a regular owner guy. I just own the Cybertruck. I take it to work. I do stuff with it. I don't, you know, have like a whole company that has a million cars that's switching out all the time. I actually daily drive this thing. I have to use it. It's my vehicle. So I wanted to give you an update, but before I go into some of the updates that I want to give you, I have to address some of the anger. There is, I have never seen anything like this. So I've had my YouTube channel for almost six years now talking about Tesla stuff and sometimes some other tech or whatever. And I first want to start off by telling you why I made this YouTube channel. It's because I had a lot of questions about Teslas and electric vehicles in general. And there were things that I wanted to know that I couldn't find online. I did end up going through with my purchase and I decided, you know, I, I really like this thing. I want to talk to other people about it, help answer some of those questions I couldn't find. So I made this channel to talk about what like a real owner experience is like. I buy the cars myself. They're my daily driver. I use them to, you know, go to work and drive my kids around and, and do whatever I got to do. And so these are the things that I kind of learn and, and share with people. I don't care if anyone else wants to buy a Tesla. Like if you want a Tesla, cool. I'd love to help you with that and, and teach you stuff. Uh, if you hate them and think they're the stupidest thing ever, uh, I'd love to, you know, give people drives and, and have people come, you know, get a ride in them or something. But if you don't want one, then, then don't buy one. There's a bajillion other cars that you can pick from. And there's actually way more gas cars that people can buy than electric cars. Enjoy. I, it doesn't matter to me at all. I think people should be able to buy whatever they want and enjoy their vehicle. I hope it works well for them and whatever. And it seems like a lot of the people coming to the Cybertruck videos specifically, I don't know, it's, it's really weird. I get a lot of really angry comments. Now I did receive some really nice advice from you guys down in the comments. You will live longer if you don't read internet comments. But again, kind of the whole point of me making my YouTube channel was to talk with people, answer questions, help them out. And a lot of that involves talking back and forth in the comments. If someone has a specific question that about, you know, a Tesla or a product I'm talking about that I maybe didn't address or clearly enough address in the video, I can go down in the comments and see where maybe I made a mistake or screwed up and, you know, kind of follow through or follow along and help kind of build on that video and, and bring more education or, or whatever is needed. But with the Cybertruck videos, I really am only reading the comments for the first day or two. And after that, I never look at them again because it gets flooded with people that are just so angry. And I don't understand because I'm, yeah, there's a lot of people that hate Cybertruck and think it looks stupid and, and I get it. Like it does look really weird. But if personally, if, if there's a something I don't like or don't want I don't tend to go click videos about it <laughs> and watch the videos. So I find it really strange. Uh, the Cybertruck is getting flooded with all these super negative, personally attacking, angry comments. And I mean, I appreciate it because those comments help get more views on the video and they're helping me, you know, basically make money. Go for it. I, I enjoy it. Thank you. I, I appreciate your support <laughs> on these videos, I guess, um, as strange as it is. But I want to be clear that if you don't like Cybertruck, you don't want it, you think that it's useless or whatever, then don't buy one. I mean, I just... It, it's weird. I don't, I've just never seen anything like it. It's very strange. So uh, I wanted to put that out there. I personally am loving my Cybertruck. Nobody... Uh, like made me buy it. I could have flipped it for a good amount of money, at least when I first got it. I, I don't think I could do that today. I could probably sell it for about break even as of right now, I would guess. Um, but I, I have no plans to do that. It's something I've been looking forward to for a long time. In many ways, it's exceeded my expectations, which we'll talk about in this video. And there's some things that are not so good with it that I don't like that I'll also talk about in this video. So the whole theme of my channel is that I'm, I'm just somebody. There's really nothing special about me. And these are my real life experiences with these products that hopefully can give you some more information uh, going forward in case you're interested in this same product or a similar product or something like that. So with all that said, whether you buy a Cybertruck or a diesel, you know, Dodge Ram or whatever you wanna buy, I hope it works well for you. I hope you enjoy it. And however you wanna use it, I really don't care. If you buy a diesel and then never tow with it, Cool. Enjoy. That's great. So getting into it, I have a little over 6,000 miles on my Cybertruck so far, and it has been really nice. Now, about half of those miles are a road trip that we took down to Florida. So we took delivery, pretty much instantly took the Cybertruck all the way from Michigan to Florida, which that itself is a little over 3,000 miles. Of course, we drove it around while we were down there, uh, but it was awesome for this. It is super comfortable. 
it is super quiet. The suspension is great, the road noise is great, the wind noise is pretty good. It's not the best that it could be, but it's pretty low. And it made the drive so easy. Now, one of the biggest missing things for now from Cybertruck, which we'll talk more about later, is autopilot and full self-driving. So it doesn't have that, but I mentioned that to say, despite missing those things, the drive was really comfortable, really easy. The Cybertruck does have traffic aware cruise control. And so that uh, works really well. And it does take a lot of the fatigue out. You are steering, but on the highway, you're not doing that much anyway. And the steer by wire is really awesome. But overall for long distance driving, the Cybertruck is great. Charging speeds are really good. Now I know if you go take a graph and you plot out the charging speed at different points of the battery pack level and blah, 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 there are other uh, better charging um, EVs. That is totally true. But the real life experience of me using this thing with me, my wife, and two kids driving all the way down to Florida, the charging was great. We never had an issue. Every supercharger we went to, we parked, we plugged in, we did whatever we did, and then we left. It, there was never an issue with charging the entire way. So yes, while you can uh, benchmark it against the best charging and the worst charging and put it somewhere on a graph, the real life experience of me who doesn't own a bunch of cars and doesn't switch out cars and doesn't test all the blah, 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 it works great. So I don't think anyone is really gonna have a complaint there. So because of the fact that about half of our miles are all highway at higher speeds, our lifetime efficiency is at 475 watt hours per mile, which is a little high for an EV. Uh, it's a decent uh, range for the Cybertruck, although it is above rated. The rated efficiency is right about 400 watt hours per mile. Uh, but being that we were at higher highway speeds, it's pretty reasonable. Reasonable. And if you compare this to any gasoline or diesel truck, the efficiency is excellent. Now that is a really low amount of energy to use to travel long distances, which is kind of the benefit of an EV. And for me personally, why I really wanted an electric pickup truck, because I do have needs for a pickup bed. I don't really tow too much, although I do have some towing coming up. Um, I do use the bed a lot and I will use the bed a lot. But in the past, I didn't find the trade-off of paying for gas and having to stop at the gas station twice a week really worth it because I also do a lot of commuting. So I do a lot of driving. So I opted to go for uh, smaller electric vehicles and just kind of have people deliver things as I needed or whatever. So adding on to the efficiency, our efficiency is pretty bad. Like the, the rated usage is pretty high because of all that highway driving. But the driving now that I'm doing um, around town with these new software updates with warmer weather, uh, I mean, we were in Florida, so it's it's about the Florida weather uh, we have in Michigan right now. Um, and even on the highway, the efficiency has been better than what Tesla advertises. So they're advertising, I, I think it's like 378 watt hours per mile or something is, is what they say the efficiency you'll get. And I am regularly getting 350 watt hours per mile. Some drives I'm getting 300 watt hours per mile. So efficiency can be really, really good depending on the type of driving you're doing. Now I'm very interested in what I will see this winter. I haven't really had it in winter yet. I think these battery cells don't like the cold that much um, in terms, again, of efficiency. They'll work fine, but I think they'll use a lot of energy. But you'll have to stick around, check out my videos in the future to see uh, how the Cybertruck likes uh, the winter in terms of efficiency and driving dynamics and all that. So as of now, I have a pickup truck so I can use it for pickup things and throw stuff in the bed, but I also have the efficiency of an electric vehicle. So having those combined is really nice, especially because Again, most of the time I'm not towing. Most of the time I'm not using the bed. And that's what most truck owners in the US do. Most truck owners buy a pickup truck and then they drive to the grocery store and they drive to work and they drive to school and they drive home and that's it. And that's what they're doing most of the time. So they're using all of that gas, all that inefficiency to only have the convenience those few times they need it. Funny enough, when I first got the Cybertruck, an F-150 Lariat owner pulled up next to me. I posted this video, I had a video of it um, on X. And he said, hey, how do you like it about the Cybertruck? And I said, oh, it's it's really nice. I really like it. And he goes, yeah, I put in my reservation, you know, the night of reveal. I, I, I don't know if I want to go through with it, though. And I was like, well, do you do any towing? And he goes, no, I've never towed in my life. <laughs> and I go, oh, well, then this would be great. Because for me personally, towing is really the only time you probably wouldn't want this truck. So driving dynamics, comfort, efficiency, um, all of that is just spectacular. And I'm loving it for the large amount of driving I'm doing. It is just awesome. And then for me, I have solar panels on my roof. And so that helps a lot, again, in terms of efficiency and costs. So I sometimes can charge my Cybertruck for absolutely free. It costs me nothing if I'm charging with the solar panels. Or if I charge at night, I'll maybe have some credits built up that I put back into the grid. Or my nighttime rates are a lot cheaper anyway. So I can take advantage of that cheaper nighttime electricity to charge up. If you're interested in solar, you should definitely check out today's sponsor, DroneQuote. They will come out to you for free. They'll use their licensed drone pilots to uh, take some pictures of your house and your setup. 
they will go out and they will find you the solar installers in your area. They're kind of compile all of that information for you and show you the best rates, the best deals you can get on solar. So I highly recommend checking out DroneQuote's website. You can also use the free calculators they have on their website if you're not sure how much it would cost you, uh, you know, to get solar or how much you would actually save by getting solar panels. You can input all of your electricity costs, how much electricity you use, and all of that information, and they'll kind of tell you like, hey, pre-solar, this is what you're paying. If you have solar panels, you'll save this much. And one of my favorite things about Drone Quote is they'll be totally honest with you. If solar's not right for you, which it's not right for everybody, they'll say, yeah, we looked into your situation. You shouldn't buy solar panels right now. They're just not worth the cost. And for some people, that's a fact. For us at my home, we are very happy we have our solar panels. They've uh, saved us a good amount of money over the years that we've had them. Uh, so it's very nice to have those. But anyway, check out the link below to check out Drone Quote if you are interested in uh, getting some solar quotes. Now, in the beginning, I talked about the angry comments I'm getting, which again, I still find very strange, but whatever. Um, because again, you you clicked on the YouTube, you saw it was a YouTube video about Cybertruck, you still clicked on it. Wouldn't you just scroll past? I don't know. It's weird. But uh, in real life, the story is quite different. And I didn't expect this at all because years of hearing the hate online kind of warped my mind into thinking like, man, I'm, I'm buying this thing that everyone's going to hate and I'm going to drive around and, and, you know, it's going to be maybe people will be flicking me off or I don't know, like just being mad at me. I, I don't know. It just warped my brain seeing all this stuff online. But in real life, it is 99%, I mean, no joke, 99% of the people that interact with the Cybertruck in real life are excited to see it. Right That's a Cybertruck. Cyber? Cybertruck. Cybertruck. Yeah, made by Tesla. That's a badass truck. Dude. Thank you. <laughs> now, maybe a big part of this is because you're not, especially in real life, you're probably not going to see something you think is stupid and ugly and walk up to it and be like, hey, you freaking idiot, what a stupid, ugly truck. <laughs> like, most people are probably not going to do that. Um, only the people hiding behind their keyboards are really the ones doing that. Um, but the interactions in real life, it's been a lot of fun. And as of now, still to this day, three months later, I would say... If you don't want to talk to people, don't buy a Cybertruck because you will be talking to people literally on the daily. I mean, I thought by now, three months in, it would kind of wear off a little bit. And I have noticed, at least driving on the road, not so many people are taking pictures of me. In the beginning, it was like, you're driving on the highway and people are taking pictures of you. They're driving off the road, like, like constantly. It was crazy. That's kind of died off. Like, thank God that that's kind of stopping. Um, but still, you'll have people coming up to you. Um, I took it to a car wash the other day and I totaled it on accident. No, I'm just kidding. You can take it through a car wash. That's all a bunch of crap. Um, I took it to the car wash and the woman walks out and we, we talked for probably 15 minutes because she just had questions. She had seen them driving around, but she wanted to see inside, which I'm, I'm all for. I was like, yeah, come check it out. I opened the door up. Uh, so people in real life think it looks cool. They really enjoy it. I had a, a Jeep full of guys pull up next to me and the, the Jeep, all, you know, they had the doors off and everything. It was later at night and I had all my windows up and my windows are tinted and they're like, Hey, Elon, Elon. I'm like, Oh God, here they go. They're like, roll your window down. So I roll the window down. I'm like, here we go. I'm about to hear a bunch of crap. And they're like, dude, wait, you're not Mr. Musk. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. And they're like, dude, this thing is sick. And they were asking me questions about it. I couldn't believe it. I thought that was, I was like, Oh, these guys are just going to start calling me names. So it's been fun. It's cool if you want to have those interactions. If you don't want to have those interactions, maybe wait another year or wait for a foundation series to drop off and save that you know twenty thousand dollar markup, um, and and have people get more used to it, so you don't have to do that. But most, almost every interaction, people love it, which is fun. About half the people I talk to don't know what it is. Still, still to this day, don't know what it is and don't know who makes it. And the negative interactions I've had, all of them have been pretty much old truck guys. And they're like, whoa, this thing is cool. You know, they got the stereotypical old truck guy voice. I'm like, this thing is cool. Like, what is this? And I tell them and, and they're like, who makes this? And I'm, you know, I've a couple people. I'm like, yeah, it's the F-150. And one guy believed me. One guy laughed. Anyway, I'll say Tesla and they go, they, then their whole face changed. They get kind of like mad and they go, does that mean it's all electric? And I'm like, yeah. And then, then they're like, oh, I would never, I'd never buy something like that. It doesn't work in the winter. You know, and they go off on the whole, the whole tangent, which then I can tell them like, uh, I've been driving electric cars in Michigan for over five years. I've never had a problem. And then, you know, some of them are receptive, but anyway, the in real life interactions are, are fun. They're interesting, but it's something you'll have to deal with as a Cybertruck owner for, I, I would guess, maybe another six months or a year or something like that. And then that should probably go away. We got to talk about the recalls. So my Cybertruck has had, I think, like three or four recalls at this point. Um, and they're literally nothing. You see the headlines. And then again, all the comments online are like, oh, haha, -ha, you have to give your truck back. I don't, I don't know if these people don't know how recalls work or they're just joking around. I honestly can't tell. But it's like, yeah, 
cars have recalls all the time and they get fixed. So the pedal recall, we had to put a rivet in the pedal. Um, that's already done for mine. I didn't specially go in to do that. Um, one of my windows broke and I have uh, videos about all this if you want to check those out. But one of my video, one of my windows broke. I went to get it repaired. While it was there, they did the rivet. So I didn't have to specifically go in for that. And then now there's uh, two more recalls. One is for the wiper motor, which I haven't had a problem. My wiper works perfectly fine. So I'm not going to go in for that unless it breaks or they come to me with mobile service or I go in for something else. And then one of the trim pieces on the bed, like those can fly off. And so that's been recalled as well. So um, the recalls are, are are nothing. I mean, it sucks that it happened and it shouldn't have happened. It would have been nice if they had these things, you know, worked out. But that's kind of what you get when you get such a brand new vehicle with all this new stuff and, you know, the, the biggest windshield wiper of any production car and all that, you know, the, these things happen. So again, if, if you don't want to kind of be part of that <laughs> experiment, then, you know, don't buy it. Don't spend the money. That's kind of the whole theme of, of the Cybertruck is there's all this crazy stuff. And if you want to be involved, you can. If you don't, you don't. I mean, it's pretty simple. So it, it sucks. I'd rather those things didn't happen, but I kind of knew what I was signing up for when I, you know, spent my money to get this truck early. So other positives about the Cybertruck. Again, the steer by wire, I can't believe I ever would care about steering my car, but or my truck or whatever. The steering is insane and it's so nice. So even though we're about to get into the negatives, I don't have autopilot on here. Using the steer by wire, especially at lower speeds, at higher speeds, it's not that different. Um, but at lower speeds, is just like magic. It is like magic. And everyone who I've let drive the truck, because pretty much anyone who wants to drive it, even just random people on the road, I'll let people drive it because it's so cool. They get used to it like immediately, and which which I find surprising because you think it would kind of mess with your brain a little bit more. Um, and they all comment on it. They all really like it. They say it's so easy to drive. It feels like like the size and stance is like a truck but the driving dynamics are like a small car and it's so true and it's really nice and it's one of my favorite features of the Cybertruck. Now, it's probably one of my favorite features because we still, six months after initial release of this thing or more than that, don't have autopilot or FSD. So I was about to jump into the negatives, but I wanna say one more thing um, that's pretty cool. So the home power share. Now, this is where the Cybertruck can back up your whole home. In, in the case of a power outage, you can take energy from the Cybertruck battery, power everything in your house. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this, and you can either get all the dedicated hardware for the home power share from Tesla, and they'll have an installer, you know, come out and do it, and you get the special wall connector and, and blah, blah, blah. Now that's functional for people and people are actually already using that software backing up their homes. I've heard of stories in Texas where they had power outages. Dudes with their cyber trucks were able to power the whole, their whole home already um, in that emergency, which is just excellent. The other way is if you have Tesla power walls, which is what I have, you don't need to do anything. You have all the hardware, everything you need, and all you got to do is plug the truck in. It doesn't even have to be into any kind of special plug or any kind of special Tesla wall connector. Any way that your Cybertruck, from my understanding, is connected to the house, if you have power walls, you can you know, feed back power from the Cybertruck and do that. Now, that software is not available yet, which is disappointing. It's supposed to come out later this year, uh, but that is all built in. Now, because I didn't need any of that special hardware or installation or anything, Tesla has given me $2,500 um, of store credit basically to buy any accessories I want or anything like that. So that was a nice surprise and that's a pretty big chunk of change out of that you know, $20,000 um, premium you paid to get the foundation series. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, it came in the form of a couple of vouchers. So I have $2,500 to spend on any Tesla stuff. So I'll be doing that uh, soon. They expire within a year. Um, so that was actually a pretty nice thing. And there are some uh, pieces of, or there's some accessories for the Cybertruck that I really want. And so now I can just purchase those for free um, or I kind of paid for them already, you know, through this uh, program. So that's a really nice thing. And it's one of the main things for Cybertruck that um, I'm really excited for because we have power outages all the time and it is one of the huge benefits and it's just gonna work, you know, we need that software update. But once we have it, Boom, now we have like a huge amount of energy. So we have two power walls, which is about 27 kilowatt hours. We're gonna go all the way up. Those two power walls plus the Cybertruck is gonna give us like 150 kilowatt hours of, of backup storage, which is just ridiculous amount of power. Could last, easily last you a week if you really cut down on your, you know, your power usage and try to save it. I mean, that's just an insane amount of power. So let's jump into the negatives because again, my channel is for your you know education and benefit and, and for you to kind of learn about these things. And I, I'm getting a ton of questions every day. I'm actually surprised. Hey, my, my invites up. It looks like Tesla's getting through the list. They're pretty, pretty far through the list of reservation holders. And I'm getting these messages almost daily at this point where people are like, Hey, 
I got my thing. Should I buy the Cybertruck? And that's an impossible question for me to answer for you. And and I pretty much answer it by saying, if you make a million dollars a year, then heck yeah, get the Cybertruck. What are you waiting for? If you make $50,000 a year or $10,000 a year, you know, probably probably don't get the Cybertruck, right? <laughs> um, but that's totally up to you and totally, you know, if, if you think it's worth it, it is up to you. And so if you don't mind dealing with the early adopter stuff, if you don't mind that the price is going to drop by 20 grand in probably six months or maybe less than that, you know, if you don't mind that people are going to be really interested, if you don't mind that the software is not fully done and you're going to be waiting for updates, then yeah, go for it. I mean, it has been awesome. My whole family, my kids love it, which is just so fun. They're, they always want to take the Cybertruck and like, you can't, you can't pay for that. You know, my kids are only going to be little three and five year old kids one time. And for them to have this opportunity to be able to drive around in the Cybertruck and think it's so cool and so fun and we take them to school and all their friends hop out and want to check it out and stuff, like I, I couldn't pay for that. That'll ne I'll never have that chance again. So, so even that alone was definitely worth it for me to kind of see their joy and excitement and everything. And knowing they're in such a safe and capable vehicle, of course, is also um, really important to me. So from that aspect, I'm, I'm more than happy that I spent the money. Um, now, getting into the negatives, so you can kind of make these decisions, we still don't have full self-driving. There's no indication of when it's coming. The last indication was Elon Musk saying it'll uh, full self-driving will come to Cybertruck with update 12.5 by the end of June. Well, it's the end of June, <laughs> and 12.5 is not anywhere. 12.4 isn't even out to most people yet. So it's probably going to be August, September, October before Cybertruck is getting that. It's going to be almost a year of Cybertruck release um, before it gets that software, which is a real bummer. Like I said, home power share is not there. It's something I kind of paid for. And if we have a power outage now, luckily I have my power walls. Um, and maybe that's why they kind of put it on the back burner because if you don't have power walls, you can use this ability. Um, but it's something that I paid for in the truck that's just not available to me. And so that's a huge bummer. Uh, the recalls, like now I'm going to have to at some point get service on the motor wiper and, and these trim pieces. It's not that big of a deal because everything's working fine for me. I don't need it right now. But it's just something I have to deal with because I spent that I spent extra money to get it early. And now I got these bummers of, uh, you know, the things that got to get fixed. So in terms of negatives, honestly, those are my only ones. Efficiency has been crazy good driving around town. Uh, the efficiency, I'm always beating the rated efficiency. Uh, in the summer, even going on the highway, I'm beating the rated efficiency. Or I should say the advertised efficiency because I don't think they went through the EPA cycle. Uh, but all of that. I don't, I don't want to get back into the good stuff because I talked about the good stuff. But th those are my negatives. And there's not many of them. I am really, really enjoying this truck. It. The other negative, I guess I will say, is it is kind of, it can get old. I was talking about talking to the people and the pictures and stuff earlier. Everywhere you go, people pointing their phones at you. I Again, I said it's reducing, but it's not gone. <laughs> Everywhere you go, people are pointing their phones at you. When you get out, you got to be ready to talk to people um, or, you know, do the celebrity thing and put your hood up and <laughs> run away or something. So I guess that can be another negative as well. But overall, my overall kind of synopsis of maybe this video and Cybertruck is that I'm loving it. I'm really enjoying it. And I've been hyped for it for years. So I started to get worried that like, oh, this thing's going to come out. And I've been so hyped for so long that it's going to disappoint me. And outside of the uh, autopilot and full self-driving still not being available, I am more than happy with everything about the Cybertruck. I'm having a great time. And I don't know, like it's weird because, you know, then I get the, oh, you're just a fanboy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm a huge Tesla fan. But why? Why am I a huge Tesla fan? Because I spent my money on one five and a half years ago and I loved it. And then I keep buying them. I don't have to buy a Tesla. I could buy any other car I want. I could not have bought the Cybertruck and bought something else. I didn't have to buy a Model 3 or a Model Y. I like these cars. I've driven Rivians. You know, Rivians are really nice too. I've, I've tried, I've had other, I had gas cars. I drove gas cars for what, 20 years <laughs> before I bought my first Tesla and I'm not switching back. So there's nothing, yes, I'm a Tesla fan, but I'm not like a blind fanboy who's just like, yes, Tesla's the best no matter what. When there's bad things, I say them. When there's good things, I say them. Overall, this thing is friggin' awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy with it. And there's really nothing more to it than that. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, leave those down below and I will answer those and you will see me in the next video.